lost 100, but that was last year. Here and now, L.A. just a game above 500, trying to make it three wins in a row here at 54 degree and cloudy PNC Park. The Pirates are owners of a seven game win streak. Let's show you the lineup for the Dodgers in this series opener for Dave Roberts going with Mookie Betts atop the lineup. But where is he playing Oral? Well, Mookie's at short again. It worked out his last game there in Chicago. Let's see if he can do more of the same magic here in Pittsburgh. Freddie Freeman, Jason Hayward in the three spot. James Altman will clean up playing center. Then it's Miguel Vargas and David Peralta. Michael Bush, circle the name there. The designated hitter batting seventh, his major league debut in front of Chris Taylor and Austin Barnes. They will have to battle Johan Oviedo and this Pittsburgh Pirates staff that has been terrific during the seven game run. It really has been very good. The starting staff has been exceptional. It's been going on for about 10 days with the pitchers, but yeah, they've won seven in a row. This is gonna be a very firm fastball, a lot of sliders and way more curveballs this year. The curveball has been devastating. So that change of speed to the Dodgers, especially with the slider and the curveball, could give them some difficulty because they have not been a very good breaking ball hitter team this year. This start of the year for Oviedo coming off a victory over Colorado. Six innings of shutout baseball. One hit, three walks, and six strikeouts. Giving up one or no runs in three of his previous four. In fact, really, the damage done against him came in his season opener against the Boston Red Sox. So Mookie Betts will step into the batter's box. In that series finale at Wrigley Field, Mookie drove in four of the team's seven runs scored. A two-run blast to the left field and then a late-inning two-run double that gave L.A. some insurance en route to a series victory. First pitch from Oviedo is strike one at 95 miles per hour, and this series is underway. Mookie playing shortstop did not look like an experiment. He looked like he had been there for a while. He plays to his left, to his right, had some range, showed some accurate arms, went to the hole and threw a ball for a force out at second. Takes the 0-2 pitch in the air to left field. Sawinski will settle underneath it on the warning track. One away. We had that discussion after the game. Mookie after that shortstop experience in Chicago where he made some really terrific plays in the field that he was going to be. Hey, Doc, Doc, let's do it again. Let's yeah. do it again. Got some reps late in games. Got to experiment a little bit, then got his first start, and it went very well. Freddie Freeman takes ball one. Freddie's last game in Chicago, 0 for 4 with the walk, three strikeouts. Big cut on strike one. Freddie has had trouble with some spin lately. The non fastballs over the last dozen games or so, he's just over 100. First 11 games, he hit the off-speed stuff over a 500 clip. Mm. The 3-1 to him. Freddie will draw a walk with one out in the first inning. They went to what he is cold with right now, but he didn't bite. Even in the 3-1 count, stuck with what Freddie's cold with as hugs all around at first base. Two veterans there with Freeman and Santana and another one here Jason Hayward playing in right field today and elevated to the number three spot in the order with Max Muncy again not playing in this series on the paternity list. It's been a minute since Jay Hay has been in this spot. 
It's like, how can you put a guy that's hitting what he is at 179? Yeah, he's three for his last 26. Yeah, how can you put him there? Well, 71% of the balls that he puts in play are hard hit balls. That's <laughs> 95 mile an hour exit velocity or more. So he's just not getting the actual results for what he is executing. One one pitch with Freddie running. And there was some catcher inter interference there. Yep. Austin Hedges, you will rarely see this, but he is definitely coming out early to kind of get this ball as soon as possible with the runner going. Reaches forward and is a little too close. And so now they're going to check on Austin Hedges. And with all the optimism about this start to the year for the Pittsburgh Pirates, it all comes back to the veteran additions that they've made. Of course, Andrew McCutcheon, his return to Pittsburgh is the headliner in that, but the Pirate dugout is very quick to bring up Austin Hedges in the work that he's done throughout his career, working with young staff. That's what he just did in Cleveland and that process underway again from here in Pittsburgh. It's like having a captain on the field, right? Or a manager or a coach. And yeah, he's always had that reputation. Austin Barnes has that reputation. He's been thrust into the number one role with the Dodgers because of Will Smith and the concussion protocol that he's going through. Two on, one away, top of the first. James Outman cleaning up for the Dodgers today, and he has been cleaning up wherever he's been batting this year. Oviedo looks at Freeman, first pitch swinging and grounded to the right side. Santana will step on first just in time to get Outman, who was hustling down the line, as Freeman and Hayward move to third and second, respectively was a foot race and a veteran trying to get it there quickly in front of the rookie just barely in time a lot of traffic over there at first base so two in scoring position with two down in the first four Miguel Vargas He's batting 213 now through his first 21 games of the season On base at 364. Strike one delivered by Oviedo. Miguel trying to heat up a little bit, trying to find that stroke, and this would be a great confidence boost for this revamped offense today with no Muncie, no Martinez. The 0 1 to right, sinking down and fair. Miguel Vargas comes through with a two RBI knock with two out in the first. The Dodgers in front by a pair. Confidence booster for Miguel Vargas, at least in the statistical column. He doesn't hit it very well. It's a breaking ball that kind of backs up, and a lot of times that will jam a right on right situation with that slider backing up, and it does jam him, but it jams him right in the right spot for the Dodgers. Ribby's five and six for Vargas this year. Will the train keep moving? Let's ask the freight train. David Peralta swings through strike one. With Michael Bush on deck. Peralta behind 0 and 2. Dodgers now with 52 two out runs. Tied for first in the National League. The 0 2 pitch coming from Oviedo. It's high and outside. One ball, two strikes. Two slash foul. <laughs> 
Vargas dancing off second. Peralta swinging away, shot down the left field line. That tails out of play. Not a lot of people here yet tonight. It's kind of a little bit of an echo chamber. They're probably the smallest crowd that we've played in front of. And this is where, you know, you're on the road, you're away from home. It's a little chilly here, but it's a beautiful park. But sometimes you got to inspire yourself a little bit differently when the crowd is sparse. Peralta down swinging, but Miguel Vargas with a two run, not with two out. The Dodgers in front. An early lead for Noah Syndergaard will go to work when we come back. And the red hot Pittsburgh Pirates. Key Brian Hayes leading off at third base in front of Tucupita Maracano at second base. Andrew McCutcheon back in Pittsburgh, the DH tonight in front of Carlos Santana. That's the task for Noah Syndergaard. Give strike one to Hayes. Three of the four starts have been quality starts. It just got some support on the bad night for him and hasn't had much support in the other ones where he could have already had his first Dodger victory. Second pitch for Syndergaard on a line to center where Outman is waiting for it. It's kind of been a theme for Key Brian Hayes. Tough luck. Let's look at the arsenal thanks to StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. A lot of sinkers, a lot of change-ups. This pirate lineup likes to hit off-speed stuff, so it could be a challenge. If he's going to throw the change-up, he's going to throw it enough. He's just got to have the one that's in the strike zone with good movement. Pirates started the year losing two of three on opening week into Cincinnati. Since then, 14 and five during this seven game winning streak. They've outscored opponents 45 to 15. It's the longest winning streak for Pittsburgh since they won 11 straight in July of 2018. One of the best starts in 23 games that this franchise has seen in a minute. A nice tap, chat with Derek Shelton, one of our favorites before the game, just uh, having so much fun early. You see his coaching staff, his team. He was just rewarded with a contract extension. So the organization rewarding this staff for, that's been coaching through some lean times here in the Steel City. But, some security to two fouled away. <laughs> Noah's 2 2 to Marcano. Just a little low, count full. Marcano, a native of Venezuela, actually named after his birthplace in Tucupita. 3-2, pulled the right field. A one-out base hit. The 23-year-old infielder. He's getting the swing and miss and the whiff out of his game. And this line drive right here, picking on a little cutter, and does a nice job lifting it over second base, getting that hit. The return of the Mac Cutchin continues. He swings through strike one at the top of the zone. 15 year veteran in a special and emotional return to Pittsburgh and a one year $5 million contract in the offseason. Syndergaard ahead of him, 0 2. But the first nine years of his career as a Pirate. He had some big years. Fourth in Rookie of the Year voting in 2009. Five straight All-Star selections, 2011 to 2015. Four consecutive top five MVP finishes from 2012 to 2015. And of course, won the award, won the award in 2013. Just an electric player and a fun guy to root for. It was everything. And you talked about that pregame. Well, the 
Matchup between Syndergaard and the speed of the Pirates. Stolen base for Marcano. Well, they're one closer to Cleveland for number one in the major leagues. It's their 26th stolen base, and it's seven for seven off of Noah Syndergaard this year. And last year, he gave up the most stolen bases. That was 30 stolen bases in 33 attempts, something they definitely need to work on. Foul ball keeps the count one and two. Since 2018, opponents are now 111 for 120 in stolen base attempts against Noah Syndergaard. That's 23 more stolen bases allowed than any other pitcher. And keep in mind, Syndergaard's missed a lot of time with injury, too. So this is a part of opponents' scouting reports on the right-hander. He punches the ticket of McCutcheon for the second out of the first. Two-seam fastball runs it in and gets it under the swing of McCutcheon. It's a nasty pitch. It's got a lot of movement. Austin Barnes does a nice job framing it. And you know what that strikeout means. We are getting going, Jack the Box. Nine away from free Jumbo Jacks tomorrow at a Jack in the Box in the Los Angeles era with the purchase. Here. Area the purchase of a large drink. That's a base hit to right center for Carlos Santana. The Pirates get one back. Like Miguel Vargas, he didn't hit the very hard, but it is effective here. Another two out run in this game. The Dodgers grab two. Now the Pirates grab one. A little off the end of the bat, but it finds the outfield grass. So the stolen base ends up hurting the Dodgers. Jack Sawinski, ball one outside. Twenty seventh stolen base against for the Dodgers. It's tied for the most allowed in Major League Baseball. Swinski picked up both of his stolen bases the last game for Pittsburgh against Cincinnati. You see what he's done the last eight games for the Pirates. He's starting to swing a hot bat. He's getting some at bats and he is taking advantage of it. Tried to check instead. Little number to the left side. Chris Taylor with the throw. And he is safe. Sawinski showed off a lot of pop last year in the beginning of his major league debut, but I'll tell you what, now he's showing some legs right here. Got down there very quickly. Definitely safe. So the Pirates now have it first and second with two out. Connor Joe, the right fielder. He's also swinging a hot bat. Strike one to him. It's nine for his last 18, five extra base hits, and seven runs scored in the last six games. A couple of walks hit by a couple of pitches as well. And he rips one to left field. Peralta will dive and make the grab. Peralta takes away a hit and at least one run for the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Dodgers stay in front. When we come back, Michael Bush, the stage is all yours in your Major League debut. Michael's number seven of eight kids for Judy and Mike. All flew in for this special occasion. Two balls, no strikes. So you have Jamie, Annie, Carrie, Luke, Amber, Logan, Michael, and Claire. Amber and Claire were not able to make the trip, but everybody else is here. Swinging away, 2-0. There's the first strike. He hasn't seen a big league fastball yet. All breaking balls. There's a fastball outside. Three balls, one strike to Bush. 31st overall pick for the Dodgers in the 2019 draft. The 3-1 pitch. Swung on and tapped foul. Count full. 
been a whirlwind for him. A lot of flights, he said, over the last few days. Albuquerque, OKC, Chicago, Pittsburgh. He'd take them all again to have this day. The payoff pitch fouled away. The Dodgers' number three prospect, number 48 overall in baseball, according to MLBPipeline.com. And some prospect analysts have compared him to the player he's replaced on the roster, Max Muncy. Another 3 2. He strikes out swinging his first time up. Well, he sees seven pitches. Six of the seven are breaking balls between the curveball and the slider. And this last one is a curveball. A little up. It's juicy. Just the miss. So Bush as the DH today. The Dodgers trying to take any other mental weight off of him. There's been enough just getting here to this point. His focus is on swinging the bat. So Chris Taylor, he's in the lineup at third. He did go, says Jeff Nelson at first base. 0 oh, 2. Definitely the part of Chris's game that he is trying to cut back on any kind of swing and miss, strike out. Just inside. They wandered away. It ends up in and in has been a hole. Two balls, two strikes now on Chris Taylor. Foul back by Taylor. No Muncie and Bush as the designated hitter. You know, Max is on the paternity list. So what's with J.D. Martinez? What is back wasn't feeling 100 percent at the end of the Chicago series. That's taken to center field. Will it get down? Bay hustling in. He dropped the ball. And Taylor at second base with one out in the second inning. They looked like he was going to get there easy, and he does. Just running a great route to get exactly where he's supposed to be, but then at the very end, for some reason, it looked like he was going to jump up as he caught it. This is a Pittsburgh team that's won seven games in a row and has been doing everything right, what it takes to get a W, but right here, a two-out blooper from Vargas, and now Taylor with that one-out error. Second error of the game already for Pittsburgh. Catcher's interference on Hedges being the other. Combine that with a walk and you give up a couple runs. Austin Barnes at the bottom of the order. Awaits the 1-0 from Oviedo. Act foul. from Barnes. Yeah, slide piece. He threw a couple fastballs. Austin has struggled with the, the heater so far this year. Oviedo looks at Taylor on second, delivers the 2-1. He did not go, so three balls and a strike. Barnes picked up his second hit of the year in Chicago. Good side view there. And a good call. 3-1. Down the chute to fill up the count. Well, Austin playing winning baseball. You say, oh, you've got to swing at that down the middle. But he's, he knows he is not swinging the bat well, not getting results. So he's trying to work the pitcher, work the walk. Three two pitch tap left side. Hayes quality defender. Gets a second out. Taylor up to third. 
So it is, is his father a quality defender <laughs> over there right. third, too. That would be Charlie Hayes for Key Bryan. <laughs> Key Bryan once told me that you know, his parents are his, his toughest critics when it comes to the hot corner. Yeah, he can make a highlight real play, but it, his parents are really tough to impress. Dodger lineup turned over. Here's Mookie. Mookie flew out his first time up, trying to make the Pirates pay for the error. High in the air. Just beyond the infield on the right side. He's got it. Marcano does. Oviedo picks up Bay. Dodgers still lead 2 1. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. First pitch strike for Noah Syndergaard in the bottom of the second. The Dodgers owning an early 2 1 lead on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Both the Dodgers runs unearned for Johan Oviedo, the Pittsburgh Pirates starter. Three hits for the Pirates. Noah's given up two of them with his cut fastball. He needs to get a little bit better. He's abandoned the slider pretty much this year to go to the cutter. The league's hitting 350 off the cutter. With the slider last year, they were in the low 200s, so there's some adjustments that need to be made. But they feel like this portion of the arsenal with the two seamer and then the cutter, that's going to be a very good combination in the long run. Yeah, strike three called at the bottom of the zone. Castro doesn't agree with it, but it looked to be a good pitch for Syndergaard. Either way, his second strikeout. Pittsburgh ended up sweeping the red and they struck out an awful lot but they found ways even though the hitting was a little bit weaker than you would expect in a seven game winning streak with a with a sweep at the end it uh, the pitching really carried them. Now Ji Huan Bay in center field to start this one. One ball, one strike on the 23 year old from South Korea. Betting 206 on the season. Made his major league debut last year. Sittergaard gets a, a call just above the zone, one and two. Stay alive with that foul ball. Bay not afraid to swing it. Very aggressive. Looking for a little redemption after dropping that fly ball. One two from Syndergaard. Bay watches it down. I hear you. Bay watch. <laughs> We're working. We're working. <laughs> Trying to stay up with you. <laughs> <laughs> two two found the way. <laughs> These three games here in Pittsburgh for the Dodgers. Hop on a bird back home to face the Redbirds. The Cardinals we at Dodger Stadium Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Two two ground ball right side Vargas with a diving stop the throw a little tardy good play by Vargas to keep it in front of him nice effort and with base speed couldn't record out number two well, if you're scouting at home and you're worried about stolen bases and Noah Syndergaard you're definitely going to worry about Bay because after this being beat out uh, he's probably going to be off to the races when he goes to first and this is definitely going to be scored a hit. There's no error there at all. It is just flat out speed from the left side. Nearly hit Austin Hedges. Yeah. 
Certainly a defense first catcher. The veteran from San Juan Capistrano. Now 30 years old. His first year with the Pirates. Here goes Bay. Barnes with the throw down. Second stolen base of the game for Pittsburgh. Walks feel like doubles. Singles feel like doubles. Pittsburgh is going to definitely go until you throw me out. And that'll be the league against Noah Syndergaard. Mm -hmm. And now they are eight for eight against him. Takes away the double play ball, two. Foul back by Hedges, one, two, the count. The Dodgers have now allowed the most stolen bases in baseball with 28. Syndergaard did not throw back to second base, keeping Bay honest. Don't think that is a second disengagement because once the runner moves up, you get a fresh two of those. Bay going for third, ball hits Hedges. Gosh, he's been like Scott Sterling the first two innings of this game. Home plate umpire Ben May checking with first base umpire Jeff Nelson to see if he saw him get hit and wasn't on the bat. Also probably checking to see if there was a swing, which there wasn't at all. Mm. Painful because of the area. Other painful because the ball's coming in and your hands are moving forward. Very rarely can you kind of cushion the blow and the impact. There's so many little bones in the hand. Take a listen. <laughs> so Hedges will tough it out and stay in for now. Between the catcher's interference and now being hit by a pitch. Yes. I don't know if it's the same hand or not. Which hand he's got it on. Because that was blown dead by the hit by pitch. Bay back at second base. Yep. And Lee comes in on Hayes. Here's strike one for Noah. Entering this series, Hayes 12 for his last 37. That's a 324 clip. Five extra base hits. Across the last nine games played. Strike two. Pretty much overall off to a slow start with the bat. I mean, he started 23. Started the year five for six, five yes. for 36. It's getting a little better. Hits right-handed pitching better than left-handed pitching. There goes Bay again. Hedges going. Hit and run successful. Tying run will score. Hedges being waved around. The Pirates hop in front 3 2 on Key Brian Hayes. Two RBI double. Just drills this where CT has vacated over there at third. A little bit of motion on the infield. You see TT break as the ball's in flight from the mound to home, and then the ball is in flight to left field, which scores two. Austin Hedges able to ease up at the end. One run lead to a one run deficit for the Dodgers here in the bottom of the second inning. He's on second, one out. No one pitch to Marcano. Bunted foul. He was out early today practicing his bunting. Like Hayes, born in a bat bag, was Tucupita Marcano. His father 
whose nickname was Tukupita. His name Raul. Name that carries weight for baseball in Venezuela. Against guys who like to steal third or teams you want to cross check there, I don't mind the inside move from Noah Syndergaard. One ball, two strikes. McConnell singled and stole second. Came around to score in the first inning. High fly ball, center field. Pushes Altman back on the track near the wall, and he's got it. Tagging up is Hayes. He'll slide in safely to third base. As McConnell. Put a scare into the Dodgers there. You slip out to a 2 nothing lead. Now you lose it after giving up one and now two more. This is a big out right here just to kind of hold a little bit of the momentum. Syndergaard struck McCutcheon out. In their first battle now with Hayes with a healthy leadoff third base. Syndergaard pitches ball one. Noah went six innings in his last start against the Mets and only allowed five hits already five hits today in an inning and two thirds. Pirates say McCutcheon's back like he never left. The straw that's been stirring the drink. The young core that they have now. He used to be. <laughs> he used to be a part of that in Pittsburgh. A little slow roller. And Chris Taylor. Across for the third out. The Pirates score twice. Thanks to Key Brian Hayes' double. And now lead the Dodgers 3-2 after two. To receive an exclusive Star Wars beanie. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash ticket packs. The Dodgers will begin the third down a run. Freeman, Hayward, and Altman on the docket against Johan Oviedo. Strike two called. Freddie thought it was inside. Ben May calling balls and strikes. Disagreed. C.B. Bucknor at second. Or Siegel at third. Jeff Nelson, the crew chief, at first as Freddie's down on three pitches. Oviedo is now in double figures as far as swings and misses, and it's mostly or all the breaking ball, the slider and the curveball. Jason Hayward. Reached via catcher's interference in the first inning. He also scored. Miguel Vargas plating. Jay Hay and Freddie. Oviedo for Pittsburgh was acquired from St. Louis last August in the Jose Quintana trade. Native of Cuba. Delivers an 0-2. Strike three at the bottom of the zone. Six pitches, six strikes, two Ks for Oviedo in the third. From so many breaking balls that they're blinking through the fastball right now. Seven for seven, Oviedo. Strike one to Outman. 30 of the 47 pitches he's thrown. Breaking stuff. There's another one. That one the slower of the two, the curveball. A 
won't be an immaculate inning for Oviedo but it will be a one two three inning on nine pitches in the third. That's all right we tried though we were on it. Well Tony Gonsolin welcome back you are going to have your first start of the season tomorrow how much are you looking forward to it. Yeah uh, you know had some weird things going on in spring uh, but just looking forward to get back out there and uh, you know compete with this team. When you think about just how everything has kind of played out because it was a freak accident with your ankle. How did that time though just allow you to kind of be ready for this for this moment. Uh, gave me an opportunity to take a little step back and look at the mechanics and uh, you know get my head in a good spot coming back into uh, into being healthy and getting back on the mound again and uh, it's a little blessing in disguise but uh, you know I'm just ready to be back out there and, uh, and competing. Is there anything in specific that you were able to work on. Uh, so, yeah, just kind of cleaning up some things some of the like my handbrake stuff and some of the timing stuff and just trying to clean that up and be in a better spot to throw the baseball. Considering you only had one rehab start and the original plan Dave was telling us was that it was going to be maybe two or three but with only one you're up to about four and sixty. How did that outing just in specific how did that kind of prepare you though for tomorrow. Uh, yeah so I had you know that one at the affiliate and in, in OKC against the Albuquerque. Um, that was my let's see alive and then one game two games. And then the third one being that one. So yeah, so I've had three three actual games, uh, one with the pitch clock. So I got to experience that for my second time because uh, I got one in spring. But uh, yeah, I mean, I felt good. You know, pitching Albuquerque is a little different. The higher altitude, it's similar to Coors. Uh, so I kind of didn't take some of the numbers on the the stuff to heart, but uh, overall, definitely felt better as as the outing went on. Speaking of the pitch clock, do you like it, or what is your reaction to the experience that you've had with it? Uh, definitely speeds up the game, but uh, I mean, I don't really notice it too much when I'm pitching. Every now and then, I'll, I'll you know, get the get the pitch from the pitch com and step on the mound, and there'll be like four four seconds of them. Just like, oh, okay, like I don't know what I was doing, but it took a little too long on that one. But it's never been it's never really been an issue for me. I heard there is a little bit of a cat and mouse game though that you can play with it. Do you use that to your advantage? Uh, no, I, li I like to have some extra time on there, says, uh, especially with guys on base, to be able to hold the ball and control the running game that way. Now, speaking of the run game, you're going to be facing a team. They, they like to move. They like to steal the base. How mindful do you have to be a, of that? And it has to be probably a quick answer. Oh, quick answer. Let's get it back upstairs to you guys. All right. Well, thanks, Kirsten, and thanks, Tony. A nine-pitch inning for Syndergaard. We're done with three. Getting the fourth, Miguel Vargas will open the scoring in this game with a two out, two RBI double in the first. David Peralta on deck, and Michael Bush in his major league debut in the hole. Pitch to Vargas, tap foul. Runs in the first from the Dodgers unearned. That would be the time to get this young man on the mound. That's where he's given up most of his runs this year in the first. It's been changed to one unearned and one earned. One for and one. LA. Okay. 25 year old from Cuba ahead of fellow Cuban in Miguel Vargas. Well, that was coming into the game that after the first inning, 0.84. It's now down to 0.8. Ground ball to third. One away. So Oviedo, during the COVID shutdown, trained back home in Cuba on the roof of his home. So on one hand, you had a blanket that his father, Lazaro, hung up, put a square in the middle, fortified it, keep it taut, and Johan would stand 60 feet, six inches away, run up the stairs, and then throw bullpens. Worked a lot on his slider to left-handed hitters. Here's a lefty. And David Peralta. The Dodgers are going to come back in this with this young man on the mound. They're going to have to hit the breaking ball. That's where he's been successful. One 
for nine on the breaking ball three strikeouts get a lot of whiffs. The 3 0 to Peralta. In there for strike one. Dodgers 0 for their last nine since Miguel Vargas and that double in the first inning. Chop to the right side. So we welcome back Michael Bush to the batter's box. Designated hitter in his Dodger and Major League debut tonight. With dozens of family and friends ready. First pitch grounded to second. Marcano has it. Another one, two, three inning for Johan Oviedo. Moda Legends of Dodger Baseball Bobblehead. Presented by Bank of America. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. Dodgers chasing a run in Pittsburgh. Series opener against the Pirates. In the bottom of the fourth, bottom of the order for the Buccos. A strike from Noah Syndergaard to Rodolfo Castro. Switch hitter batting 254 on the season. Swings through, strike two. Now, last year, Castro had 59 hits in 71 games. 23 of them went for extra bases. Made them count, huh? Uh -huh. No bases here. Grounding out to Vargas. Jiwon Bay walking up to A Bay Bay is fantastic. <laughs> that is strong work. <laughs> the center, center fielder singled his first time up in the second inning, stole second, and then scored. Key Brian Hayes gave us this 3 2 score we're staring at. Fouled away. There are guys you know are going to probably swing at the first pitch, <laughs> and you just pretty much challenge them, especially when it's a guy you don't want to walk. I mean, coming into the game, a 54.6% swing percentage. No. Folks at home, the reference point for that league average is 47.1. And to Oral's point on the first pitch, 48.6%. He's swinging. Swung at all three pitches here. <laughs> well, he's fifth highest, so yeah. he's trying to look for number one. Simmons struggles with the breaking ball, so let's see what Noah goes to. They were going in to jam him with the two seamer. Boy, that ball had tremendous movement. Another 0 2 from Syndergaard. Ground ball fair. Freddie has it. Syndergaard has to hustle, and he won't beat the Speedy Bay. Let's take a look and see when Noah Syndergaard reacts to this ground ball. And he gets off pretty good, but it was a false step. It went backwards towards third, and then the first step wasn't a full one. So well, that's the difference between being safer out at first base. That little bit of just getting on the level ground took a little bit longer, and that half a step cost him. Yeah, you see the hesitation there yeah, for a split second, and that's all it took. Yeah, there was a good three strides there that weren't full length or full speed. Hey, on the move. Barnes throw to second. Do they get him? No. Edges edges will cost you runs. 
And this is what overall you've got to clean up if you're the Dodgers. Holding runners, keeping the running game, fielding your position, covering first base. It's just the kind of things that in a close game are going to burn you. Second of the game, seventh of the year. Edges with hedges at the plate where I saw you. One ball, one strike. Syndergaard up to 67 pitches now. Okay, gave that look. CT was ready at third base as Hedges fouled another one back. Inside, count level. Syndergaard hit Hedges in the second inning. Catchers came around to score. First to home. And that Hayes double. Shot the other way. Base hit into right field. Bay has the green light. The throw from right field. Up the line. 4-2 Pittsburgh. You can kick yourself and say, oh, you made a bad pitch to the nine hitter, gave up the base hit to right, but really the inning was built long before this pitch. No, and now it doesn't have a runner in scoring position. Hedges with his wheels can't go down to second. So Jason Hayward threw it all the way in the air to home just to take a shot, knowing the catcher couldn't move up. Top of the order, Key Brian Hayes. One for two, that two run double. You now, the big news in Pittsburgh today is that the Pirates have won seven in a row. It's that they've won seven in a row, and they locked up Brian Reynolds, reportedly, to a long term deal, an eight year extension worth $106.75 million for the 2021 National League All Star, currently on the bereavement list for Pittsburgh. Not in the lineup tonight. Ground ball left side beyond a diving bets. He's got back to back hits does Hayes the Pirates do two here in the fourth first and second still just one out. Pookie up the middle that six hole he's got great range no matter if you put him in right field second base or shortstop here is second start at short. Mentioned Reynolds extension. Key Brian Hayes got one last year on opening day for eight years and $70 million. Those two, along with this man, Marcano, got apart. And as part of that young core, fly ball to Peralta. Runners can't advance. Two away. Eight hits for Pittsburgh today. Matches the season high for hits allowed for Noah Syndergaard. They used to be known as walk up songs. Now they're get in the box songs. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the music get in the box. Ball two down. Yeah, for those car DJs that we all ride with who have short attention spans for songs, <laughs> yeah. they are now built to be in stadium DJs. For sure. Four seconds in. Oh, you, you got to listen to this one too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. The 2 0 to McCutcheon with two Pirates aboard. Syndergaard gets a strike one call. It was a tad wide, but well executed. with the drive deep right field and gone 
Andrew McCutcheon with his fifth home run in his homecoming year with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Who now lead the Dodgers 7-2. Not an inning for Noah Syndergaard to remember. Fastball trying to go for the outside corner leaks back over the middle of the plate and Kutch has really always been a very good low ball hitter going up the ladder to him. Sometimes you beat him an awful lot has a little loop in there. Victor Gonzalez quickly getting loose in the Dodger bullpen. A new season high in hits allowed and runs allowed. Santana's going to fly out to Peralta. Brings an end to the fourth inning. Now the deficit for the Dodgers is five. AM 570. KLAC. The Dodgers down five in the fifth. It's Taylor Austin Barnes and Mookie Betts facing Johan Oviedo. Strike one. Taylor reached on an error. Austin Barnes grounded out to third. These are just the two at bats here at the bottom of the order. In comparison with Pittsburgh's eight and nine hitter, they've reached in all four of their plate appearances three hits and a hit by pitch. That's a base hit in the right for CT. Rounds first, thinking about two. And we'll trot back as that was quickly thrown back in by Connor Joe. But a leadoff base hit for the Dodger third baseman tonight. Well, Taylor reaches on an error and now gets himself on here with this slashing line drive. This is well hit. He will like that swing and do a lot of reviewing of that one to try and get hot. Strike to Austin Barnes. Pirates looking for an eighth straight win. And during this win streak that they've been on, the starting pitching has carried most of the load. Starters ERA of 190. These last seven games. Did he go? No, he did not, says Jeff Nelson. So one ball, two strikes on Barnes. Twelve of the last 13 games, in fact, for Pittsburgh have featured a quality start, which is at least six innings and three or fewer runs allowed. Barnes grounds it to third. Will be a play at second. There is one out. Taylor moves up. The lone non quality start was Saturday when old friend Rich Hill pitched five innings, gave up the only run allowed that day, and struck out seven. So, not quite a quality start, but still a quality term for the veteran lefty. You might have to change that stat, huh? <laughs> it's, it's limiting Different as era. the Dodger workload or the uh, pitcher's workloads are. First pitch strike to the leadoff batter, Mookie Betts. It's a foul tip right there. Glad his hands are fine. It looked a little bit like the pitch that Hedges got hit with. Oh, two to Mookie. He stays alive. Oviedo has really filled the strike zone here, about 70% strikes. Mm -hmm. He is suffocating these Dodger hitters. Uh, 
Another 0 2. Betts pulls it foul. Through nine pitches in the third, another nine in the fourth. If it's a fastball, it's probably going to be a strike. If it's a curveball, it's going to end up being a strike. The slider has been more the, the chase pitch. Another 0 2 to Betts. Mookie pulled. And that hooks foul. But when you're throwing your fastball at 95 and you can go all the way down to 78 right there and you're and you're throwing everything for a strike you're going to get hitters out in front like that. Mookie's good to be still up there. have made that a foul ball. Again the 0 2. With Taylor on second little number on the right side. Santana. Gonna stop bets before he can get to first base. Taylor now at third, two out in the fifth. Two out RBIs are a thing with the Dodgers. 52 of them, first in the National League. Freddie walked and scored 0 for 1 otherwise. Vieto struck him out in the third. First pitch fouled away. Taylor off third. Pitch from Oviedo. Grounded the other way foul. And one of those rare stretches where Freddie just Looks to be fighting it up there. Ball one down and in. It just doesn't look like his normal bat speed. It, there's a little feel in it. You see him cut it loose every once in a while, but I don't want to say hesitation, but just like he's swinging underwater sometimes, kind of guiding it. Didn't go. And then you get those tweeners right there. He started a little early, able to hold up on a fastball in. He's worked the count even. Taylor on a quarter of the way home off third base. The pitch from Oviedo grounded to left side. The throw from short is high. So Taylor will score and Freddie's aboard. I think this will get greater to hit just because on the degree of difficulty of the throw. Freddie's going to get to move up to second base and the ball getting into the camera well or the stands. And he doesn't try and do too much in these RBI situations. He likes to use that side of the field. Keeps him on the ball longer. Keeps him on the breaking ball. He is motoring as fast as he can there. So 7-3 ball game. Here's Jason Hayward. Freddie with where that throw went now on second. First pitch grounded to second. Top five over. The Dodgers get one back. And 80 pitches. Time for Who's In, Who's Out, brought to you by In and Out. It's Victor Gonzalez, recently recalled from Oklahoma City. Throwing the ball really well in Triple A. Seven innings, 12 Ks. We'll face Jack Sawinski, Connor Joe, and Rodolfo Castro, at least. Sawinski roped to right. And that's off the netting. So he has a stand up double leading off the second inning. Breaking ball down, he stays on it. Collapses the knees a little bit with a little knee flex to get underneath that one. I mean, isn't it a perfect name for a Pittsburgh Pirate, though? Jack Swinski. Yeah. In scoring position for Connor Joe. 
30 year old from Poway San Diego California former Torero at USD and a former member of the Dodgers organization. Back in Pittsburgh, the team that drafted him in the first round in 2014 from USD. Said, hey, spent the last years with Colorado, now with Pittsburgh. Between the lines, hate the Dodgers, have to as a competitor. But nothing but love and respect for an organization that he spent a couple years with. Most notably in March of 2020, got his first big league camp invite. Really excited. Takes ball two from Gonzalez. Three days into camp during a routine spring training uh, checkup, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. An opt out of the 2020 season. And went three months chemotherapy. Two, two is down. Count full. Given a cancer free diagnosis the 20th of July 2020. Cut to a year later from that date. Hits a home run. The day after he was called up by the Colorado Rockies. That's fantastic. I mentioned Ron Porterfield, director of player health for the Dodgers, is someone who was with them. Every step of the way, a 3-2 pitch grounded to short, and Mookie will make the play, keeping Suwinski at second base. It's like old hat now for Mookie. It's like, oh, I've been here for a long time. This is routine. It's even routine for us <laughs> to watch right, him totally. do it. He's just doing it so well and so professionally and flawlessly. Fourth appearance, second start. A swinging strike from Castro. It was 0 for 2. Syndergaard struck him out in the second. And he grounded out to second in the fourth. Grounded beyond the glove of Gonzalez. Vargas. Oh. Can get out number two. Now a word from Morongo. The Marketplace by Fabio Viviani. Now open. The dangerous G1 Bay has picked up his 14th and 15th hits of the season today. Eight of them infield hits. Including both tonight. Strike one, the top of the zone for Gonzalez. Tip to Barnes, 0 oh 2. The 13th pitch for Gonzalez. Foul back by Bay. <laughs> Gonzalez strikes him out swinging, stranding Sawinski at third base, keeping the Dodgers within four. Swing in the offseason. Don't miss Backstage Dodgers, presented by Cadillac. That's Thursday at 6 o'clock. James and the Dodgers down 4-3. Here at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Top of the sixth inning. So the Backstage Dodgers crew is following Michael Bush into the yard today. There's Michael for his Major League debut. 
Good friends with James Outman, of course, Michael and James, everybody. As that shot to left center field, that will get down on the warning track. I think a fan got a piece of it, so James is going to have to stay on second base. A leadoff double for Outman. This ball is crushed. I mean, this is a home run at Dodger Stadium. It gets really deep out there in left field and left center. Left field 379, and then the wall goes away from you all the way to 410. So straightaway center field only 399 here, but 410 to that little notch. So one rookie in scoring position for another. Bill Vargas plated the first two runs of the game for the Dodgers. Take strike one. Let's finish up that thought for Altman and Bush. No one's going to forget James, what he did his first major league at bat. You asked James even now, he said that that day, that whole week, was just one big blackout for him. He doesn't remember much. So he's tried to not flood the head of Michael Bush too much ahead of today. Just trying to let him live through the moment, soak up this experience as best one can. Two one to Vargas. It's outside. Three balls in a strike. It is just so different in your first game, your first week. It's, it, the, the dirt feels different under your spikes. It's uh, the every walk, putting on your socks in the locker room, putting that uniform on. It's just completely like an out-of-body experience. A walk for Vargas, first and second, nobody out. Let's flash it back. We are seeing that same swing this year. We saw it in spring and back on July 30th, 2022. Alex Fessier got the home run ball for him in his first major league at bat. So I was asking James, I was like, hey, you know, what's the what's the scoop on Michael Bush? Great kid. Big concert goer. Would just go to concerts by himself in spring training after getting his work in. <laughs> James would be like, I am so tired, I can't go to a concert right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going by myself. Maybe he sleeps at them. <laughs> <laughs> Two aboard for Peralta. A little flare left side, foul territory, caught by Hayes. Let's go down to Kirsten Watson downstairs. Well, Stephen, you mentioned that his entire family here just missing two of the eight kids. Two of his sisters couldn't make it, but also some of his really good friends are here, including his college baseball coach. He played at the University of North Carolina, and so they all were able to make it out, and they're just so excited and emotional for this moment because, as you all know, this is every kid's dream. dream that you had and lived, Oral. I, I never thought I was going to make it. <laughs> 17th <laughs> rounder, four and a half years in the minors, cut from high school, cut from college. But I tell you what, it is a dream. And I know that it's a special dream even more when you put the Dodger uniform on, just the way Dave Roberts and Andrew Friedman and the whole organization treats these young players. The culture in the Dodger organization is so welcoming and respectful that they get comfortable in a hurry. It's behind Oviedo, 0 and 2, with two on, one out, inside. It's a little different against the Pirates. There's a few guys, you know, Austin Hedges behind the plate. He watched on TV as he was growing up. And Andrew McCutcheon. So you got some guys out there that are like, I'm on the same field as these guys. They, they used to just be on TV. Bush with a rocket into center field. His first base hit in the big league scores his buddy James Outman. 
Way to go, Michael Bush. Outstanding. 32 on the pass list, mostly family. And then the friends, his college coach, got the ball, got the hit, got the memory, got the smile. And if you want to be romantic about baseball, before the game meeting with the media, Michael Bush was asked about James Outman, and he joked, I don't know, has he been doing anything lately? Is he doing good? <laughs> and then he got serious and said, nobody works harder than James Outman. Big reason why I've been out early, putting in more work, taking in more swings in the cage. And so it's fitting to us that the first run driven in in Michael Bush's career is James Outman. This could be trouble for the Pirates. It is great for the Dodgers. Bases loaded. Chris Trailer bloops it in. Michael Bush makes a great read and a great use of skills with his speed to get to second base and not allow the force out. Jam shot, and now you're kind of in no man's land. The ball falls in no man's land, but the runners are in the same place between first and second, second and third. Bush does a very nice job. With Oviedo at 94 pitches, Derek Shelton will come take the ball from him in a big spot in the top of the six. L.A. with the bases juiced, just one down, down three. Crazy Bush family, your kids in the show. Awesome. How about the kids here in this inning? James Altman doubled and scored. Vargas walk, Bush single. Robert Stevenson on the mound. Fastball slider and a lot of sliders. Doesn't matter if you're a left hander or a right hander. A little trouble with the pitch com right here. I'll let you know that the scoreboard is not equal, but with runners in scoring position, both these teams have had 12 at bats, this being the Dodgers 12th at bat with runners in scoring position. Pittsburgh's got 25 ABs and the Dodgers have had 24. So they're even in those opportunities, just not even on the board. We saw this in Chicago for LA, pitch com issues. We're gonna try and test another device for Stevenson. Last appearance. It's a scoreless one. He's stranded five of six inherited runners so far this year. He inherits three in the top of the six in a three run game. First pitch to Austin Barnes. Gets called a strike. These pitch comp issues are reminding me of old Selk. You have me now? You got me now. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Taken to center. It's caught by Bay. And the Dodgers get another one. It's 7 5. Sack eight, hit well enough to be a hit, get in a gap, maybe clear the bases, but Austin Barnes will take it, does the job. At least the lowest common denominator job he was looking for. Vargas, the only one who could tag up. Crosses home plate, first and second. Two out, and here's Mookie. Phillips up in the bullpen. The 2-1 to Betts. 
Tried to check up, but could not. Well, in live action, I was wrong because I didn't think he went at all, but uh, it was pretty far. So, two balls, two strikes, two on, two out in the sixth. Dodgers down two. It's ball three down in the dirt. We're full. Luke has got to go out and cover that outside corner. That's where they're living with him. Find a gap. He'll score Chris Taylor with his speed. Runners going. Foul. He anticipates that slider, them going away. You see him compress his legs to get ready. Then you see him kind of hunch over a little bit like he's looking out there right as he's getting ready to start. Betts with a high drive, deep left field. Will this carry enough? It is caught! Jack Sawinski robs Mookie Betts. An outstanding play at the wall in left field. Keeps Pittsburgh in front. Oh, goodness. Four hundred and two feet on the casual F7. <laughs> That wall in left field is only six feet high, and then it goes to 10 feet. And then, of course, the Roberto Clemente right field wall, 21 feet, his number. Welcome back, Evan Phillips. Great to have Evan back on the bump for L.A. Strikes out Austin Hedges on three pitches. It's a slider that he has come to know and love, and so have the Dodgers. That is an illusion pitch. Ball to Key Brian Hayes. So Evan back from the paternity list and congratulate him and Liz. Welcome to baby boy and mom and baby are doing well, which is all that matters. Hayes has done damage today, two for three. Three strikes to Hedges, three balls to Hayes. It's a nice catch by Austin Barnes, just <laughs> casually okay. kind of bring that back in the strike zone. It was a little wide. I'm surprised Hayes didn't try and sell that a little more. Barnes and Phillips will take it. The 3 1 now. That one is even yep. better. Yep, it's 3 and 2. to Freddie Freeman backhanded and then flipped to Phillips two away. Came back from a 3-0 count with three fastballs on the outside edge. Got one call to get back in the count and then did a very nice job covering first base there.
First pitch to Marcano. A flare to left field. And Peralta running into the fence. Hopefully that left hand is okay. Evan Phillips works a one, two, three, six. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. I am joined by Michael Bush's father, Mike Bush, and Mike. your son has made his major league debut. He got his first hit. It was an RBI single. What was the emotions going through you and your entire family? How special was that moment? It was uh, out of this world. It was, uh, eh, you know, I can't, I can't, I don't really, I can't explain it. It's uh feeling I've had since uh, Monday when he called and said he was coming up and and uh, and this has been his dream the kid has worked worked as hard as uh, a ball player could work the kid honors the game you know there's something about guys that have come before him guys that will come be after him and and uh, he's just made it happen now and Hopefully there's better things to come. How special is it to share this moment with not only with Michael, but all of your kids that are able to be, to be here today? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and I know two of his sisters couldn't make it, you know, through work and other obligations. I, I know they're, they're watching this right now and everybody, I mean, from his coaches to his friends to the community at Simley. It's just, it's just a dream come true. What was it about Michael when he was a little boy that you knew that, you know, this, this opportunity could be real and this moment could happen? Well, I thought it came from his dad, but, it, you know, it's everything. It's the community, the, the game itself, just there's some, some sports and some games that kids are just made for. And I think, Michael, this has been his game. I mean, and... You know what? God's just blessed him. Yeah, yeah. His game, his dream, and he's making it happen. We saw him get his first hit in his first game in the big leagues. And there's something kind of special to it. Not only did he get on base, but he got an RBI with it. And you know who he brought in? He brought in James Altman, who was one of his friends. How cool was that? That's right. Oh, you know what? Those guys, him, Vargas, they played together a couple years here. And... I knew this was going to happen when he came. He needed, he needed to get back to some of that uh, friendships that they had, and and uh, yeah, I'm just excited, excited. I think it's just, you know, a a, a starting point yes. here from here. Mike, this is the beginning of truly something special for your son, Michael. I had to take you away from the entire squad up there. You have your kids, there are friends, there's family, there's so much going on. So, Mike, thank you so much. And go back, enjoy this moment, and congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, let's get back to the booth to you, too. Thank you so much, Kirsten, and thank you to Mike for uh, sharing that. Gosh, I'm softer than hummus, man. I that's uh, <laughs> that's the good stuff. It is. And you know, there's some tears somewhere with the two girls watching and listening <laughs> to dad. Yeah. Trace Thompson pinch hitting. No one got a big God, piece I'm, of Austin I'm Hedges. I'm telling you, he's Scott Sterling. If you watch the video online, you know the <laughs> reference, but he is just wearing everything tonight. Um, and that's going to be, you know, two weeks to get rid of that bruise. And he's staying in there. <laughs> so one of his former teammates got endearingly put it. Austin Hedges is an animal. So <laughs> another three, two climbing the ladder is Hernandez to strike out Trace Thompson. Hernandez can get it up there 97 sometimes even 98. This is the top of the strike zone. You've got an offer. James Altman let off the six with a double. He takes ball one here in the seventh. Came around to score thanks to his friend Michael Bush his first major league hit. Dodgers nearly had an 8-7 lead. Not for Larceny and left by Jack Sawinski taking away a three-run homer for Mookie Betts. Oh. 
Two balls and a strike. And no Max Muncy tonight for the Dodgers, the NL Player of the Week. But here we see what is most likely the National League Rookie of the Month by the time April wraps up in James Altman. 13 extra base hits on the year. 3 1 pitch. Swung through, strike two. 96, it's got some life to it. Mm -hmm. That is maintaining its altitude. That spin rate on that four seamer. Hard one to catch up to. The payoff. Same pitch, same result. Back to back strikeouts for Hernandez in a spotless seventh. We're stretching at PNC Park. Inside the box score is brought to you by your Lexus dealers, Andrew McCutcheon. Opposite field, three run homer in the fourth inning. Number 292 of his career, approaching the 300 home run milestone. He's due up here in the bottom of the seventh. Pittsburgh up to Trace Thompson, who pinch hit for Jason Hayward, takes over the right field duties as well. Yancy Almonte will take the baton from Evan Phillips. Yancy trying to find some consistency out there on the hill. He's got all of his stuff working and just trying to get it a little bit more consistent. Cutchin one for three, and with that home run past Bill Mazeroski on the all time total bases list for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And now 32 behind number 21, Roberto Clemente, on the home run list. Strike two from Yency. Picking off a few sliders away and then just bringing that two seamer back. That is real tough on a hitter. Yency with outstanding movement as a Dodger and he just needs to fill the strike zone with it. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's three for Yancey striking out McCutcheon and five strikeouts overall for the Dodgers. Five more and everybody gets a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow. Jack the box in the LA area if you buy a large beverage. First pitch fouled on the right side by Carlos Santana. A veteran switch hitter now at 36 years old. Turned celebrated number 36 earlier this month. a base hit in front of David Peralta and left. Head to Dodger Stadium on Monday for Dustin Bobblehead, Dustin May Bobblehead Night presented by Security Benefit. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. I almost just put an S on the end of Dustin's. <laughs> Dustin's May's Bobbleheads Nights. First name basis. <laughs> Jack Sawinski. Two for three with a double and also the highlight catch that robbed Mookie Betts of a home run. He's the reason Pittsburgh's still in front. Dropped on late, need a game reset as Yancey misses down and in one and one now. Dodgers scored two in the first, take an early lead. Pirates got one back, then they scored two in the second. They get 3 2. Four more in the fourth. The Dodgers got one in the fifth and two in the sixth. Nearly had more. Pick off on the first. Santana just back in time. Oh, look at that catch, Oral. I mean, it really was a fantastic play. Well read the whole way. Uh, he's tracking it. The wind was helping it a little bit. That's why he had to keep easing back to the wall. But 
Ball's at six feet. And it was an out. Oh, that hit Yancey of the mound. Glove flip to Mookie. Nice play by Vargas to get the lead runner. For three night thus far for Joe. Fouls the first pitch away. Entered today though with an OPS of 1097. And among hitters with it, at least 60 plate appearances this year. That ranks sixth. Holds off there. Listening. They're having a conversation with both Derek Shelton and Doc Roberts before the game. I was <laughs> hearing both these managers rave about Connor Joe, not just the human. Most people know that, but the way that he controls his ABs. Guys that control the air ABs with that kind of description from baseball people, they're talking about their balance, even when they take their imbalance. And they're talking about their command of the strike zone with their eyes. Two balls, two strikes now. And as a pitcher, when you know that you're facing a hitter like that, okay, this is a guy who, you know, he's not a free swinger. He's, a, how does it shift your mindset? I think there are guys that you need to pitch inside more. I think you need to get them in mo emotionally involved in the at bat somehow. Because if you leave them in their comfort zone where the ball is kind of inner half, the ball's kind of outer half, you're trying to get a chase, you can't get it because they're in balance and they see the ball well. I think and sometimes you, you pound those guys in to, to kind of change their, their brain chemistry a little bit. Impact that balance a little bit. Swinski going, Joe swinging at strike three. Two strikeouts in the seventh for Yancey Almonte. Dodgers need two. Line at spectrumeducator.com. Beautiful shot on a brisk evening in Pittsburgh, PA. Dodgers and Pirates opening a three game series. Dodgers trailing 7 5 in the eighth inning. Colin Holderman will face Vargas, Peralta, and Bush. First pitch grounded up the middle by Miggy. Lead off base hit will bring the tying run to the plate. Hits it right back where it came from, up the middle, and with less shifting, you see they wanted to play him up the middle even more, but you can't go on the other side of the bag or get that close to it. David Peralta has a couple nice plays in left field, looking for a knock, fouls that away. Those who are looking for more production from Miguel Vargas at the plate, they've seen it the last six games. He's seven for his last 21, Oral. Starting to let it go a little bit more and the bat is getting more accurate. Maybe the thumb is feeling better, the hand's feeling better. Tap to Holderman. He throws for one. And that's all they're going to get at second base. Check out the Nissan calendar for the rest of this week. Two more games in Pittsburgh and a flight home for a three game series with the St. Louis Cardinals who have had some early season struggles themselves. St. Louis looking up at the Pittsburgh the first place Pittsburgh Pirates at this point in the year nobody predicted that. And again everybody's no everybody's looking up at the Pirates in the division. If you're coming out to that beginning of that homestand make sure you check your game times they're all different there in those first three games. The first one's on Apple TV. Fourth time up for Michael Bush. Last time up, first major league hit and RBI. What have been your early impressions of Bush or all given 
his prospect profile and how much people praise his bat. Well, they, they love the bat, and they're going to find him a position if he keeps showing what he can do in the batter's box. Grounded right side, rolls foul. First base, second base, third base. Played a total of 80 innings at third base. That's kind of the last alternative place to try and find a way to get him in a lineup. Also has played some outfield. Just mm -hmm. the DH today, the organization wanted to take some pressure off of him. You know, clear his mind as much as possible when you know it's racing on a day like this. But Michael praised the Dodgers organization, said everyone's gone above and beyond. As much work as I've had to put in different positions, the coaches have been working just as hard to help get me ready for when my name is called. And so as for where he'll play while he's up, he said he's ready for wherever, whenever. Olderman's 2 1 outside, three balls and a strike. I also liked what he said pregame about his mindset, Oral. He said, yeah, I'm not looking at it as like I have anything to prove. I get to play a Major League Baseball game today. I just want to help the team win. Counsel. That is a really good cut from a young man who just got called up. And he is in his legs the whole swing. That's well located pitch low and away, and he's all over it. Represents the tying run for the Dodgers here in the top of the eighth inning. One on, one out. Keep battling. Hitting 337, slugging 506, a 967 OPS through 21 games. In the minor leagues, pair of home runs, eight doubles, 18 walks to 19 strikeouts. And he works a walk. That's an outstanding night. I mean, you go one for three with an RBI and your other bat, a walk, reach on base percentage of 500. Mm -hmm. Now the go-ahead run at the plate with Chris Taylor. Last at bat a hit, and that is his first multi-hit game of the year. CT looking to tack on for himself and for the Dodgers right here. Reached all three times today. Two hits, and then got some help from G1 Bay in center field. Two balls, no strikes. swing and a drive to deep left field. Chris Taylor puts the Dodgers in front. CT3 with a three run blast his fifth of the year 8 7 LA. It comes in fast and it goes out fast. Thigh high, inner half, buggy whip swing. Boy, does he meet it right on the barrel and he knew it right away. Taylor had three total hits his last 11 games. He's got three tonight. Now eight on the year, five being long balls. <laughs> Called strike three on Austin Barnes, two down in the eighth. Syndergaard spits the hook. 
An outstanding work from the bullpen has set up this comeback. They've thrown three scoreless. A couple more scoreless, it'll be a W. And a win streak. Buki holds up, two balls, no strikes. So Taylor did what Mookie nearly did in the sixth inning. Let's get one beyond Jack Sawinski's glove in left field for a three-run homer. Shot in the air that will drift out of play. And hurt somebody's hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, the temperature has yeah. dropped here in the last couple of innings. A little breezier. Mm -hmm. Olderman's payoff. Betts. A little soft liner to keep Brian Hayes into the top of the eighth inning. But a big swing, a timely swing for the Dodgers from Chris Taylor. Helping the Dodgers lead frog the Pirates. Times. Happier times now for L.A. in Pittsburgh. Thanks to Chris Taylor's go-ahead three-run homer. So it's 8-7 Dodgers. Bottom eight time, here's Caleb Ferguson for the 10th time in 2023. Tenth time on the mound for Caleb, and he's hoping to make it nine out of ten good scoreless outings. He's only had one rough outing against Arizona where he gave up runs. It's the bottom of the Pittsburgh order in the eighth inning. The Dodgers are to hold on to this lead. They'll have to do so without Bruce Dar Gratterall. Timeout call. I think we have a pitch clock violation on the hitter. No, it's timeout oh, called call by timeout? Castro. Yeah. Okay. One and two. his reach the off knock for the Pirates tying run aboard for Pittsburgh stay tuned after the game you got access Sportsnet Dodgers Jerry on the board C T three yep that's the big story right now and Michael Bush making his debut Showing bunt, out of piece. Could come down to the wire on what the play of the game's going to be, right? Mm. Between CT3 and mm. Michael Bush's first hit and RBI with his family going nuts in the stands? I don't know. It's a tough one. Bay with a bunt. Back to Ferguson. He will go to second to get Castro. Now Mookie's going to run the ball over. Vargas will tag Bay. <laughs> now Mookie choking. Mookie's like he made an effort towards second base. That's why he wanted yeah. to get the ball over there quick enough. Mookie telling Tarek Brock, an old friend of the Dodgers organization, the first base coach of the Pirates now, that that looked like a move towards second. 
Well, the bunt, it's firm, and Caleb goes to second. And this was a risky play, but it looks like he gets him because of the foot slows down. As fast as you're running towards second, the last few feet is the slowest, other than when you're just starting at the beginning because you're leaning into the dirt. You're definitely not going to accelerate when you're heel, and yep. you know, he's out. So Dave Roberts has come out of the Dodger dugout brought all four umpires together. Well it's one to six for the put out at second. And then Mookie runs it over. Trying to get Bay thinking that he made an attempt or a turn towards second. Let's take a look here. It looked like he just kind of turned his shoulders to observe what Pittsburgh was going on. Pittsburgh is challenging on. the out call at second base. Okay, so the challenge has actually come from the pirate dugout hmm. that Castro's out at second base. No, I think that's a sure thing that he was out by about six, eight inches. The heel looks short of the bag. And the toe doesn't come down until the heel kind of compresses. Yeah, yeah, he's out. From that angle, I mean, unless they think or saw something that would suggest Mookie's foot came off before Castro's slide. I mean, just I'm just after review. That was quick. The out call at second base is confirmed. The runner's out. Oh. Pittsburgh will lose its challenge. Yeah. This stage of the game, you can understand throwing a Hail Mary like that. Mm -hmm. So Castro off the bases, but Bay on, which is a weapon. There's Tarek Brock. By the way, was managed by Dino Ebel in double A back in the day, Jacksonville. Story for another day. Mark Mathias will come off the pirate bench to pinch it for Austin Hedges. Quick visit from Mark Pryor to go over the hitter. Also a reminder to keep Bay close, but a much easier for the lefty to be deceptive than the right-hander. Matthias is a California native. Went to Irvington High School in Fremont, and then Cal Poly slow on the campus in San Luis Obispo. Launching Bay on first base. That's a strike. Get the Dodgers space heater. The Dodgers a space heater. <laughs> was that was that a friend of yours, Oral? I know you were asking for him before the game. Yeah. Okay. They make them small now. You should, <laughs> we should be able to travel. Strike two for Ferguson. <laughs> Matthias, a good fastball hitter, hitting around 300 off the firm stuff this year. But off to a very slow start, his first dozen or so at bats, but has been hot of late. Just off the plate, one and two. We've seen that called 3-0 when Evan Phillips was on the mound, just not called for a third strike there. It's down and inside. Caleb lost his footing a little bit. Count even, two and two. Dodgers lead by one, with one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Took the lead in the top of the eighth. Chris Taylor, three run homer. Now, hanging on. It's full. Well, the Dodgers really put it to the Pirates coming back in this one so far. You know, the Pirates only gave up six runs against Cincinnati Reds when they swept them. Dodgers already have eight tonight. 
Caleb's 3 2. Lost it high. Ball four. Puts the tying run on second base in the form of the lightning fast, Ji Huan Bay. Shelby Miller warming. Again, no Bruce Star Gratterall in this series on the paternity list. Sending our best to Bruce Star and Allison. Top of the order now, Key Brian Hayes, who's two for four. Hayes has boosted his average about 80 points over the last 10 games. Mm -hmm. Well, the average at 239 on the year, but make no mistake, he's rounding into form. Good pitch from Ferguson. Strike one. Ferguson trying to keep these the string of quality innings coming out of the pen going. He's grounded out his last time up. Caleb can get the right ground out here. Get out of the inning. Big hack. Got a piece. Strike two. This bullpen has done the job since coming in. These Pirates started off hot against Noah Syndergaard. They were nine for their first 20, but the pen has gotten to the point where they are just three for 14. Strike three swinging. Two out. That is a huge out. Probably not going to get a double play with the speed of these Pirates, but swing and miss. Keep everybody intact on the bases. Now left on left. Ferguson against Marcano. On a bad pitch, just a little low. One low, one wide. Ferguson's 2-0. That get a piece? It did. It hits Marcano and the bases are loaded for Andrew McCutcheon. This is real close. Um, Raise his finger. Hand was up initially for Dave Roberts. They're playing on. Back in the fourth inning. Two seamer that leaked down the middle of the plate. McCutcheon has been a very good low ball hitter throughout his whole career. Three run home run then. He has the bases loaded now. And you think back to one of his biggest games against the Dodgers was in his first year as a giant. Started the season two for 24. Then April 7th in the series opener, he went six for seven, including a walk-off three-run homer off Wilmer Font in the 14th inning. Fouled straight back, one and one. So he's had big nights against LA before. Caleb Ferguson would like to prevent another one here. Bases loaded, two out, bottom eight. Two balls, one strike. They've gone breaking ball, fastball, breaking ball. They're trying to go down and under a swing, but Kutch has not bit yet. The first one, it was a check swing, it was a ball. It also was borderline, almost a strike.
Three and one with nowhere to put him. Twenty four pitches from Ferguson, eleven in the strike zone. Well, hold on to your butts. The three one. McCutcheon popped up. Barnes underneath it. Ferguson and the Dodgers out of the jam. McCutcheon slams his bat as L.A. will take the lead to the ninth inning. Still 8-7. Chris Taylor, of course. Michael Bush getting an RBI with his first big league hit. Outstanding work from the bullpen. Yeah. Four scoreless so far, and I think we're going to get one more of those guys in there for the ninth to see what happens but the Pittsburgh Pirates also bringing in somebody new Underwood Jr. taking the mound here to try and keep it at a one run game Dodgers looking to tack on the right part of the order to do it two three and four it's Freddie Freeman Trace Thompson and James Outman. Freddie shaking his head, disagreed with that strike call, one and one. Yeah, Freddie, high fly ball. Left center, and there's Jiwan Bay. Okay. He dropped a fly ball earlier. So wait and see on there. It was interesting when he dropped the fly ball. It looked like he was jumping a little bit not in a hot dog way but just mm. kind of that's his style so. <laughs> yeah trace came in as a pitch hitter for Jason Hayward in the seventh inning he struck out so for the second time tonight behind 0 and 1 big swing Two in the dirt, count even. Trace with seven hits this year, four home runs. Batting average at 184. Shot the other way. It will slice well foul. Had that one huge game, and he'd like to start stretching out the results from that. Kind of just more consistent, less swing and miss. Good take there. Good command of the strike zone from one at bat to the next. And one of the keys has just been that he's hit righties, hasn't hit lefties. Right. The 3 2. Good walk work by Trace Thompson with one out in the ninth inning. James Altman will come up his last eight games. He's 12 for 32 to 375 clips who on the season batting 308. He threw strike one. Seven of those 12 hits extra base hits. Four home runs. It's driven in nine. We've seen with some Dodger earlier wins this year that the tack on runs have really helped out. And they haven't had any here. This has been the major comeback. And you hope that if it's Shelby Miller in the ninth, that he doesn't need any extra help. But it sure would be nice to get some. James agrees. And goes down the line in right field. Going to third is Thompson. Stop sign from Dino Ebel. A one out double for Outman. Second and third for the Dodgers. Doesn't it seem like James is in the middle of those tack on runs a <laughs> yes. lot? I mean, 
If the lineup turns over, he's been near the top. They haven't been afraid to hit him in leadoff. They haven't been afraid to hit him number three. Tonight, he's in the four hole, which is an RBI hole. And if it gets all the way to the wall, he probably gets an RBI. But Thompson gets held up at third. But the Dodgers have the table set with an outman at second. Miguel Vargas takes a strike. Dodger rookies tonight now five for 11. The pair walks in three doubles. Vargas has one out in the other two. Rounds the 0 1 foul. When you talk about Dodger rookies, you think all of a sudden, oh, these guys got to be like 19 to 21 years old. Well, it's hard to push through this lineup. Sometimes it takes you till you're 23 to 25 years old to crack the Dodger roster. A lot of these guys might have been in the big leagues with Pittsburgh a year or two ago. The count one and two on Vargas. One out in the ninth. Dodgers looking for breathing room. Ball two down. Still see that right thumb for Vargas. Wrapped. We are starting to see more from him at the plate. Not just walks getting on base. Let me get some hits. Grounded left side. Thompson was running on contact. He is out at home. Now at the corners with two away. You run on contact because even if you're out at the plate, you have another guy in scoring position when it's second and third. Sometimes when it's just a man on third, you might not come in contact. So you can have two shots at him. This time you got to go. So a veteran will break up the rookie run for a moment. David Peralta in front of Michael Bush. Outman on third, Vargas on first. I don't know if the Dodgers would try a double steal here to try and bait him a little bit. Vargas going. Stop by Santana at first base. Big play there. Saves a run for the Pirates. Takes one away from the Dodgers. 8 7 lead. Here comes Shelby Miller. Third straight win. This is a big play, too, though, for Pittsburgh. Carlos Santana diving to take a knock away from David Peralta. Shelby Miller's responsibility is the ninth. Post to zero. The Dodgers win three out of four in Chicago and get the leading lady here in Pittsburgh to make this a really nice road trip so far with a couple more games left. But they're going to have to go through Santana right here. But Shelby Miller started out the year with eight scoreless. Looking for another one right here in the ninth. No career saves, regular or postseason for Shelby Miller. He's got the stage here. Bottom nine. Strike one to Carlos Santana. And I know the fear that everybody have right, has right now is, gosh, how often do you see someone make a play to end the inning <laughs> and lead off the, the next frame? I think it happens about one out of eight now that we have a DH. <laughs> Tapped to Miller. And everyone can exhale who is fearing that. One away. The two for four, Jack Sawinski. He's been playing good baseball for Pittsburgh, particularly of late, on both sides of the ball. Miller delivers a 93 mile per hour strike. Did he? No. Chris Siegel at third base. It'll get your attention on the mound if you've never had a big league save. It's a little different. It's fun. It's kind of like, you know, if you ever get to a point where you get to have your first complete game. Mm. 
in the first at bat to maybe hit for the cycle. It's just it's a little bit above pitching normally. So fun, not nerve wracking or fun and nerve wracking. A little of both. <laughs> If you're a veteran like this, you kind of like the buzz, I would think. Two balls, two strikes after the souvenir from Suwinski. Especially when it's kind of a sparse crowd, you know. You see a lot, lot more seats than people. Nice to have a personal accomplishment that kind of gives you a little edge. Spiked. Count full. Austin Barnes has a magnet in his glove. <laughs> that was not an easy pick. Mm -hmm. Miller's 3-2. Ground ball right side. Marcus calmly and coolly gets it to Freddie. Two away. Challenge him strength against strength. Here we go. It'll be up to an old friend of the Dodgers for the Pirates here in the ninth. That being Connor Joe, who's 0 for 4. Strike one from Miller. I don't know if any Pirate player got more hugs from the L.A. side pregame than Joe. Hair high. One and one. Ninety three dotted for strike two. He's got really good rhythm tonight. He's moving down the hill, getting closer to the hitter, and balls coming out of his hand easy. comeback victory of the season and it clinches a winning road trip the Dodgers are officially streaking five shutout innings from the bullpen Chris Taylor's three run bomb Michael Bush's first hit in the big leagues and first RBI a memorable night for everybody and a great great road trip so far Shelby Miller's first career save in the day that Michael Bush played his first career major league game drove in a run the big swing along to CT3. A lot to talk about on the post game show with Don Trail, Jay Hare, and John Hartung. It's Access Sportsnet Dodgers on the way. For Kirsten Watson, Oral Hershiser, and our crew here at PNC Park, I'm Stephen Elson. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Dodgers trying to make it four in a row.